Today I'm going to fit the Shad 58 top box to the Goldwing. Uh, this gives a backrest and also the storage that we need when we go on a trip. It, it looks fairly straightforward but with some complications. What I've already done is put the backrest onto it. Let me show you. The backrest comes separate in two parts and you have to attach them. They're very easy to do. Uh, you just need a six millimeter drill and you have to drill the plastics but the little pop marks, the little positions for the drill are, are marked on the moulding so you know exactly where to drill it. So you just drill them from the inside and screw these two very nice backrests on. And that should make a, a huge difference. So that part is easy. There are two plastic covers that you see on the back of the gold wing that just clip out, one there and one here, and inside blind holes to attach a top box. So they just clip out and we have to come back to these, we have to do something with these. Let me mock up how the fitting plate works. So we have spacers small ones and large ones and these literally bolt in that manner. That's, that's how the plate fits. So it's really as simple as that. From this angle you can see how it works. The spacers hold it off. That's your plate that your top box and its mounting plate fits on. The only tricky thing is that to take those spacers, this plastic cover has to be drilled. So that's, that's the hardest part, I think, of the whole assembly. So let me show you what we have to do. This is the underside of that cover plate and you see two marked circles. So it would be easy to assume that that's where the holes drill. But I notice they don't actually line up. Well, one of them does, but the other one doesn't. So where do you drill them? So just as a, a guide, it looks as if we're talking about 90 millimeters between the center of the holes. 90 millimeters. If you go on here, between the centers is about 97. So something isn't right. If you drill them, now that, that one I can see lines up. That one is out. That one is out. On the instructions here, it says drill a hole at either end of these plastic covers for the spacer to be able to go through. And it suggests an 18 millimeter hole and a 16 millimeter hole. One spacer is 14 millimeters. The shorter spacer is 16 millimeters. So what they're doing is saying, drill an 18 and a 16 to give you a, two, a little bit of leeway, a two millimeter, a two millimeter space. So you would think, but there's no other directions, there's no other measurements of where to drill them. So the natural assumption is to drill them exactly where the guide marks are. But this is out. This is out. We've seen that it's 90 millimeter center to center, but this is 90, about 97 cent, center to center. So how on earth do you know where to drill it? Using the packing material, I'm just going to make a template. Cut in around.
because you get one chance of this. So that's a template. Let's go and look at it on the bike. Template of course fits like that. So we've got to really mark the position of where to drill. I've just taken an 8mm bolt and cut them down to short stubs so that I can screw them in. I mean, I appreciate you may have difficulty in, in doing this. I just cannot see how you can get the center of the holes without doing something like this. It seems such a shame that those guides are incorrect. Lay my template over and you can, I can see through the center of the hole. If I can mark them, there and there. This is the template put on the front of the plastic. And I can see exactly where to drill. This is not an easy task. I've got a milling machine that I can drill through with even milling bits. You won't have that luxury probably. Um, it's intended to be done with a, a normal electric drill. You just have to be very, very careful. So I'll show you how I do it. It might just give you some inspiration. Now I'm just at the 14 millimeter end, center mark in that one, and then go on to the smaller milling piece. So now I can drill out this end. There we are. So there they are in position, ready to mount the mounting plate itself. It's not an easy job that. And that's with a, a milling machine. You've got to be so precise. It's probably a, a lot easier to use the template method as I did and then an electric drill with maybe, I've, I've done the exact sizes, maybe a couple of millimetres bigger to give you some chance of getting to the fit because I don't think you'll see it once the plate is on. Let's try the plate. Okay this is this is screwing screwing it in now there's a little tip there's washers under here and I couldn't hold them on so I super glued the washers on the back of this plate because every time I tried to put one on, the other one fell off. So uh, super gluing the washers onto the plate worked beautifully. The plate is a separate buy. You don't get it with the shad box. It's about 50 pounds, but I couldn't find any in the country, in the UK. Couldn't find any anywhere. And then I found, uh, by googling it, I found one, I think it was in Italy. And it was, no, it, it, it was actually cheaper, including delivery, than buying it from Shad Direct by a couple of pounds. I was really worried about whether it would come. And uh, the company Moto In. Moto in, I think that's what it was. Boy, they're good. It kept me in touch all the way. They told me within a day of ordering it, it had been dispatched. And then a day later, it had reached the border. Day after that, it was in the UK on Friday before the weekend. And then they said it should be delivered on Monday. And it was delivered on Monday. Absolutely fantastic. Otherwise, I was stuck. I couldn't do anything. 
Shad say it's about five weeks before you can get one from them. So how this Italian company got one, I've got no idea. Now that's that. Now the next part, there's no instructions at all. So you're going to have to work with me on this one. This is the mounting plate that actually comes with the top box. It's very substantial, very strong. And a whole host of bolts. I haven't a clue where they go. I'm surprised there's no instruction for this. So I can see four screws. It must come apart to be able to attach. So that's the last screw out. Something must come apart. Ah. So two bits. Let's put that one aside because we know that that one fits with four screws. So I've got eight holes in the fitting plate that's really solid. It's not going to move anywhere. And each one of these holes has got a nut welded on the side. It's almost, I don't know whether I can show you, maybe not, but through here there's one hole, but it's not, it's only half, it's, kept, it's, up, it's half the hole. It's not lining up. So I'm doing something wrong. It looks it looks the right position and it this is really baffling. I can line full holes up, but it first of all it rocks there. You can't get it to, to fit, fit, it doesn't rock, just there. Line up the holes and the whole thing rocks. It looks as if these go in where the holes line up. There, there, there and there. So although there are eight holes, maybe this is It only lines up with four. And they're, they're different lengths. Let me try a long one. I wonder if it's to fit so many different plates, depending on what bike you have. That's why they don't give you instructions. and replace it with a long one, a long one there, and a long one there. Where any of those will go. And bolted in four positions, surely strong enough. Now, of course, that takes all the rocking out. You're locking it down. Much easier than I thought. Now let's put the cover back on. That's very strong. And it's neat, extremely strong. Now, how does the top box fit? Pretty comfortable, I think. The, the lid is expandable, that takes two full face helmets. You pull these levers 
and it goes right down to two different positions actually. Oh, you've got to close them again. That's its smallest. That's its smallest position, which is quite neat, isn't it? And then you can just expand it up to 58 litres to take two helmets and clothing. Absolutely solid. Very well made. I've not, never used shad before, but they look very neat. And that's it all done. With a nice backrest for my wife and the most beautiful seat in the world. So the only thing I've got left is this whole bunch which would normally worry me to death. But it must be for a thousand types of bikes. That's all I can think of. Thanks for watching.